Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We're here today with our second Cabral host call. Each and every weekend, bringing you two shows, answering our community's questions. Yesterday, hopefully, you tuned in. We answered questions about microdosing and psilocybin and certain stacks that you may want to use if you're participating in those things. We talked about heavy weight lifting and potentially a link to IBS or intestinal permeability. We also spoke about uh, exercising maybe too much and what happens to the body. Like, what happens when you do a good thing too much? Spoke about that. And then also how to make swallowing pills easier, a look into that. Uh, And the last question was, because we answered a lot yesterday, we looked into and spoke about what to do if you have high levels of cortisol, but you still want to do an intermittent fast. So check out that show. That was episode 2640, stephencabral.com forward slash 2640. And today, if you want to read along with the questions, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2641. All right, let's dive into it. Question today is from Daisy. Daisy says, I'd love to try the Equalife Detox program, but it contains foods I have a severe reaction to. Not sure if anything is sourced from corn because that is debilitating for weeks. Uh, If so, rice causes intense fatigue. I can't even keep my eyes open. Pea protein irritates my knees and gut, etc. How can I heal myself when the treatment would hurt intensely? It's a great question. Yeah, a great question. The the, the, uh, start is actually with the gut. So if you haven't run the gut bundle, I can't recommend running that. That's basically three labs. Looks at food sensitivities, uh, yeast and fungal-based overgrowth, uh, bacterial overgrowth, H. pylori parasites. And then what we do is we go about rebalancing the body. Typically, we're using the CBO protocol with the CBO, uh, with citrocytal drops if there's a lot, and then the CBO finisher uh, to help basically seal everything back up. So uh, it's a 12 week plan. It works really phenomenally. And then if you have parasites or other things, then we work on other protocols in order to rebalance that. That's where you start. So you start to then decrease all of these sensitivities. Daisy, I was where you were. It's been a while now. Luckily, I can say that. But from you know my teenage years all the way until my mid 20s, uh, I used to get itchy eyes uh, from everything. You know, really, like my eyes are still like my kryptonite. If anything starts to creep in there, I feel it in my eyes first. It's an early warning sign. Uh, puffiness or itchiness or anything like that. It's just, it just lets me know, like, hey, you're moving off track here. <laughs> What's going on? And so I just pull things back on, right? So, um, yeah, that's that. So that, that's really what I want to look at is that there's a histamine issue most likely. Again, I have to give you my disclaimer. No medical treatment plans, medical diagnosis, medical cures, or medical advice is given on this show of any kind. We look at the underlying root cause imbalances, which for you may be gut issues related to then histamine production, which then leads to all of the issues you're feeling right now. All right? So that's that. Uh, and no, we don't. Our, our products are not corn-based, so hopefully that helps. Luana's up next. Hello, Dr. Rawl. I hope you are doing well, and thank you for all you continue to give to the community you created. I would like, and I just want to state here, I think the community, I, like, I, I mean, I appreciate that, but the community really is its own living, thriving uh, entity. And if you've been to cabralsupportgroup.com, yeah, my name might be in that URL, but honestly, uh, 22,000 people from around the world all helping each other, cheering each other on, asking questions, getting advice, giving answers. It's, it's pretty amazing. So definitely check that out if you haven't already at cabralsupportgroup.com. All right, let's see here. Uh, I would like to know if you have an opinion on the new sleep staging beta setting on the Aura Ring. Do you know what it measures and why it is different than the original settings? My deep and REM numbers in beta are less than they are in the original setting. Do you have any new ideal sleep and REM numbers for us with the beta? Thank you. Luan or Luan. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be coming out with that. So they're still in beta right now. And so it's, it's 
I, well, I'm going to come out with the show and then they're going to like finally tweak it exactly what they want and then they're going to switch it, right? So it's, it's out of alpha, it's in beta, and then eventually everybody will get it as like the new one. And when it comes out, then I will give you, it's less for everybody. Like don't feel bad, Luana. Uh, I've got two things, like about Luan and Luana. So, um, but don't, don't feel bad about it. It is for many people 10 to 20% less than what they're getting. So kind of like with that in the back of your mind, understanding that the numbers don't change though. You still want 90 minutes of deep and two hours of REM. That doesn't change. The only thing that's changed is how Aura is actually tracking their numbers because previous to beta, they were actually on the higher side, like um, out of range on the higher side. So they had to move into this new thing they're calling beta because their, their numbers were a bit skewed on the higher side. Just like previously, their numbers for steps used to be on the higher side. And I actually think that they're a little bit on the lower side now. They kind of swung in the opposite direction. Not by a lot, um, by less than 10%, but I actually measure it um, with all different types of pedometers to check. So yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not that far off. I think what we're going to find is that there's a happy medium between aura beta right Right now and their uh, current version. And I think that that's where we'll settle in and that's going to be the true, true accurate numbers. All right. All right. Uh, Audrey's up next. And, and by the way, they, they use that with the new Gen 3 and there's, you'll see that there's specific green light, red lights in there and it tracks movement, it tracks heat, all sorts of different uh, biometrics. All right, Audrey's up next, and Audrey says, Hi, Dr. Paul, what is the harm that could result in doing a bikini or physique competition? I've heard it could destroy your metabolism and other issues. Are there any benefits to doing one? Okay, yeah, great questions. So here's the thing. The big benefits are learning that you can literally do almost anything with your body. Like that was one of the things that I looked at back when I was more into natural bodybuilding. I never competed, but in my early 20s, it was saying, okay, if my natural body type, right, my natural body type is, let's say, somewhere, like it's 5'8", and then somewhere between, like if I didn't work out, maybe I'd be like 155 pounds. But if I do work out, I'm like 165 to 170 pounds, like right in that range, right? Uh, but if I work out really hard and I eat a lot of protein and I try to build up my body, I could get this body, which is not meant to be 200 pounds, I could get it to 200 pounds, like with a lot of muscle. And so that was like a goal of mine. And that's, that's a goal for a lot of, of people. It's like, what can I do with this body? And so what you learn though is the discipline that it takes in order to create that. So... I've worked with so many bodybuilders, a bikini physique competitors, athletes in general, and the dieting takes so much discipline that it's, it's a great tool that you can use for the rest of your life. The problem is that getting to sub 5% body fat and for a lot of physique competitors, well, for men, it might be closer to like 3%. For women, it's definitely single digits. And that can absolutely affect your menstrual cycle. It can increase cortisol levels. It can decrease your thyroid but there's an easy way to test. All you have to do is run an at-home lab test called the stress, mood, and metabolism. It will tell you exactly what is going on in your body and how hard you are pushing it. That's the truth. And that's the only way that anybody can know because nobody can tell you otherwise how it's affecting your hormones if you don't actually measure those hormones with the lab test, the, the stress, mood, and metabolism. You can find that at steamcabal.com forward slash uh, labs. You'll be able to find that, all right? Or you could, of course, you can always run it with your local uh, naturopathic doctor or integrative health practitioner level two, okay? Becky's up next. Hi, Dr. Wall. I wanted your opinion on the teeth whitening system by Primal Life Organics that uses the red and blue light to whiten your teeth. They claim it will not damage the enamel and it will strengthen teeth as well as whiten them. They use hydroxyapatite. I think that's what they, how they pronounce it. PAP, olive oil, bentonite clay, and essential oils. Thanks. Okay, so um, I'm not against the actual uh, ingredients you just labeled. I'm actually looking into right now the long-term effects of using this type of LED light on the teeth to whiten them. So I can't make a yay or nay recommendation on this. However, I am looking into it. And what I will do is I will do a Friday review podcast on it once I've um, found it to be legitimate, meaning like uh, safe, I should say safe, because it does work, but I want to make sure that it's safe because uh, you don't want to end up with receding gums or wearing away the enamel on your teeth or weakening your teeth. That's, that's not worth it, right? So that's why I haven't done in any of them yet. Uh, but in the future, I'm not against it as long as it's safe and it's healthy, all right? So let me get back to you on that. Stay tuned for future Friday Review podcasts. All right, let's get to Mallory's question. 
Hi, Dr. Ball. I've been detoxing from mold and fungal overgrowth for that was misdiagnosed as a child. And needless to say, it has been quite the journey. So far, my journey has included Herx, Herxheimer type reactions with even just the smallest dose of a binder or antifungal. Do you have recommendations on how to limit Herxes? I went to a friend's house the other evening. She made a meal with a good deal of tapioca starch. Is it possible that this acted as a binder in my body? I seem to detox very heavily for three days after. I also wanted to ask if you've heard of DNRS, uh, Annie Hopper's neuroplasticity program. Have you seen chronically ill patients benefit from a program like this? Uh, let's see. Thank you so much for all you do and your dedication to helping people get well. All right. So Mallory, great questions. I've actually done a podcast on dynamic neural retraining systems. And yes, I think it could be fantastic for many people, especially with uh, anxiety, uh, a lot of sensitivities, et cetera. So please, um, if you can't find the podcast at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, just write in to cabralsupportgroup.com. That's all. We'll find it for you. All right. All right, so let's go through a couple things here. When you're taking an antifungal or certain binders, you can also be reacting to histamines. It may actually not be a Herxheimer reaction. It could be a reaction to the herbs or to certain binders. If you haven't tried the, well, if you haven't tried the new mold protocol by Equalife, I would definitely do that. And the universal binder by Equalife, those are lower histamine-based products. Whenever you're using herbs, it can never be no histamine. Whenever you're using binders, it can never be no histamine. But the more charcoal you use, the higher the histamines, and the more aged herbs you use, the higher the histamine reaction. Okay, next thing, tapioca starch. Tapioca starch is not digested by most people. It can create bloating and gas and all sorts of issues. It's difficult to break down. It gums up the intestines. Not a huge fan of tapioca starch. Okay, uh, let's see what else. Okay, what else can help with the Herxheimer reactions? Sauna. Even if you can only do it for five or 10 minutes, a sauna or infrared sauna can be fantastic. A coffee enema can be fantastic, as well as a castor oil pack can be fantastic. For all of the ones that I recommend in terms of detox for saunas and castor oil packs and coffee enemas, um, just head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash resources. All of my favorite companies are listed there that I've used myself, that I use in my practice, all right? All of those should help. So keep on keeping on. You'll get there. There's no doubt about it. And of course, just remember that you have all the integrative health practitioners to reach out to if you want help. Um, you can reach out to our team at Equal Life. You can find a local naturopathic doctor, somebody that's really qualified to help you with these. All right, let's get into, let's do one more last question. Lydia is up. Lydia says, hello, I drink approximately four to five liters of water a day. For everyone out there in the US, uh, that is about one and a half gallons of water a day. So it's quite a lot of water. I enjoy hot water much more than cold and or room temperature water. Therefore, I tend to boil the majority of my, of my water and take in a stainless steel kettle. Can this much boiled water contribute to the amount of aluminum found in my hair and mineral test. Thank you in advance. Um, it is possible, but not necessarily because of the stainless steel kettle, because it may not contain aluminum. But water, if not filtered properly, or if it's just from your tap, should and will contain quite a high amount of aluminum. So there is that, yes. And you're drinking a lot of, a lot of water. Uh, it is very possible Again, I can't give you any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, medical diagnosis. I don't know why. I would look as to why you're drinking a gallon and a half of water a day, especially if you're under like 200 pounds, because that's a lot of water. So, because what happens is like a lot of a good thing is not always better. That much water can flush out a lot of the minerals. It can weaken your stomach acid and digestion and add just a lot of fluid to the intestines and, and a lot of work for the kidneys as well. So most people, uh, again, I'm not telling you how much water to drink, but most people don't need more than two to three liters of water a day. And that can include herbal teas, smoothies, fruit, et cetera, which are obviously majority water. So let's just look into that. Again, I can't give you exact advice, of course, but certainly um, it could be raising your levels of aluminum. There's no doubt about that. And so I would look into that. But uh, you know, if you're already starting out with that much water, you're already doing well in terms of overall health, we may just want to cut it back a little bit and, and also look at the source of the water, all right? So hopefully that was helpful. Thank you so much, Lydia, for writing in. Thank you, everybody, for writing in today and being a part of this uh, Cabral Concept community. I appreciate you, and I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new week of the Cabral Concept. Don't miss it. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, 
energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues. After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my Health Results Accelerators. Simply choose the health and balance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.